get a free you pancake forget, breakfast. You, you made me forget to put the camera up. So <laughs> you're blowing me away with this kind of stuff. Hello, my friends. It's Andy and Hedia coming to you live from Yorba Linda, California. For the living fearless devotional. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a production of ResurrectMinistry.com where we're harnessing the power of the internet to share the gospel around the universe as far as we can go. Uh, we hope to... Um, assist you in your walk with Christ, whether you're a seasoned saint or a new believer, um, the Lord will meet you where you are. It's fantastic. So check out the resources, drop us a line, let us know what you think. Um, send us a prayer request if you may have one or offer to pray for us. We love that too. And if this ministry blesses you in any way, you could click the donate now button. Yes, yes. that's pretty good. And while you are uh, watching, make sure and comment to let us know what you're thinking about the devotional or uh, comment on what uh, we are discussing, what the devotional brought to us, or if you have a, a different take on what's happening uh, on our podcast at any time to answer any questions. Sometimes I phone a friend uh, because I can't come up with the, uh, the answer to something. So you guys are my friends. If you're watching on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitch, X or Rumble, um, you can uh, let us know what it is you are thinking by just putting it in the comment section. If we don't see it during the live, we will eventually see it. Uh, make sure and check out our sponsors in the description. Go to LifeWise uh, and check out the supplements that they have there for uh, inflammation or sleep or beauty. Um, and you're going to want to make sure and type in the URL LiveLifeWise.tv. LiveLifeWise.tv. And then uh, StreamYard, if you want to do what we're doing and... Um, and uh, give out a devotional or share a hobby you might have. Or if you want to teach somebody about um, needlepoint, you can go on and it's do it live. interesting you always come up with that example. Is that, is that the second time I've done that? Mm -hmm. Why do I keep coming up with needlepoint? I don't know. It is really the weirdest thing. Like when was the last time you knew somebody who needlepointed? Uh, I was married to her. Oh, right. <laughs> and there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> you asked, so I told you. Uh, and you're going to want to make sure and go to Proverbs 1, 2 through 7. Proverbs 1, 2 through 7 will be, uh, make sure and get that prepared in your Bible. We will be going through that in just a little bit. But for now, we are reading from A.W. Tozier for the Christian Leader uh, for March 25th. The title is Read or Get Out of the Ministry. I like it. Get out. Um, out with AW you. Uh, references Prover Proverbs 1 5 and says, A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. AW says, When a very young minister, I asked the famous holiness preacher Joseph H. Smith whether he would recommend that I read widely in the secular field. Wait one second. Yeah, Joseph Smith is he the starter of the Mormon? No, I I, I don't think he's an H. Uh, I think it is okay. Joseph Smith. But it's a different Joseph. Smith. I I believe so. Anybody I hope so. Uh, phoning a friend? See, I told you. Uh, make sure and let us know if that is correct. Because why would he be? Why, why would he be talking to that Smith? That's what I'm hoping. Mm, there were. I don't think they were around at the same time. I think uh, the Mormon Smith was a uh, hundred years before that. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, or so. Um, anybody know? Let us know. Uh, he replied, young man, a bee can find nectar in the weed as well as in the flower. But is there really bee, uh, uh nectar Weeds have flowers. Weed? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, dandelion. I took his advice, or to be frank, I sought confirmation of my own instincts rather than advice. And I'm not sorry that I did. John Wesley told the young ministers of the Wesleyan societies to read or get out of the ministry. And he himself read science and history with a book propped against the saddle pommel as he rode from one engagement to another. Andy Dolbo, the American Indian preacher of considerable note, was a man of little education. But I once heard him exhort his hearers to improve their minds for the honor of God. When you are chopping wood, he explained, and you have a dull axe, you must work all the harder to cut the log. A sharp axe will ease work. Will make, sorry, a sharp axe makes easy work. So sharpen your axe all you can. Do you have a dull axe? No. No. Very sharp. Very sharp. 
It's kind of like cutting a tomato, right? The, there's so much stuff in this head. Sometimes I forget uh -huh. little, the little things. My next point. Go ahead. When this is written, we don't have the internet mm. or our phones. Right. So I don't think Tozier had any idea how much information we'd have mm. access to because I think there's limits. No, they, they, they tell us that we only use a small portion of our brain. No, I think there's limits to how much secular information we should be processing in our brains mm. because I don't mean science and history books. I'm talking news and other kinds of superfluous stuff, mindless stuff, uh, you know, uneducational stuff. He specifically reported, uh, referred to educational stuff, but just entering data into our heads is not a good thing. Random data. And it could be false data. I disagree. Do you want to read the yes. prayer? In the busyness of life, Lord, help me to always guard time to sharpen my axe. Amen. If you wanted to just dive right in. I did. Continue. So I just think that um, I think we can cloud our heads with too much junk. I think in the ministry, again, this devotional is about ministers. Right. Mostly. But it reaches many of us who uh, become disciples in many ways. We're like many. We should all be disciples. Many ministers. Yes. As a disciple. No. I'm not sure if that's a great. Uh, way to put a it. mini minister. Yeah. <laughs> We're not standing at a pulpit and, and speaking to a bunch of people. Sometimes we're speaking to somebody at Starbucks. Yeah. Or we're all ministers at a of the gospel. Lacrosse game. Um, but I feel like having some of this nonsense knowledge, which I think is a good way to put it, is is gives us the ability to respond to nonsense that people will be speaking and distracted by, and say, you know the the stuff on TikTok you're watching. The, yes. the, uh, the lipstick videos and the hairdo videos and uh, the, the things that make you feel like you're not as good as that person. Right. Um, you know, that's, uh, that's something you need to but guard. That's, feel from like, the, that's from the devil. Do you feel like you have to watch the lipstick videos to make comment? I don't think I need to watch them, but I need to know, I need to know that's what it is that they're seeing. I don't need to see a hundred of them. I can see two and, and see that they're getting like a million views. And right. Go, okay. Listen, there's a lot but of, but you're people. not filling your head with lipstick no. videos. Right. Yeah, But the knowledge of them, the, the, that they exist. Sure. But you don't think there's a point at which we overload our tiny little pea brains with worthless information. No, I don't think so. Oh, you, yeah, okay. What you can do though, is waste a lot of time. So ah. you don't need to spend a lot of time in it. Good point, good point. Uh, you just need to know that it exists and then Lord, I would like to redeem the time. Does this include, because I, I read a book about um, uh, the, the history of the Mormon faith. And I think I read another book about um, uh, Scientology. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it was the Scientology book, the, the one that he wrote, the Dianetics. Um, is, is there anything wrong with doing that? Because they, they're, they're talking about secular stuff. Right. This is information about another religion. Because I just wanted to know, what is I it? I don't know what the official opinion about that is. Hmm. What do you guys think? Is it okay to read even the Book of Mormon or? I mean, I think when it's for the purpose of witnessing to Mormons or understanding so that you can witness, mm -hmm. I don't see what the harm is. I mean, I know in apologetics, they read the Quran and they read um, Hadith, which are the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad in order to have a response to them. Mm -hmm. So I don't see why any other faith would be any different. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't do a Ouija board, and, and I, I did well, that when I was a kid. Right. Yeah, so that's doing something, or I don't... Uh, you're not supposed to do yoga because you're not supposed to yeah. worship false gods. But maybe to read... From an educational standpoint yeah. as opposed to a worship standpoint? Yes. I don't think it should be a problem. But I don't know if there's an official, there's an official ministerial rules about that. I want to know. Maybe in our next interview with Pastor Jack, I'll ask him that too. It's a good question. That'd be a really good question. What are some of our um, followers saying? Hi, Cindy. She's driving but listening. Now she's driving and listening. And then Kelly. <laughs> hello, hello. But Cindy's typing, so I hope she's voice uh -oh. typing. <laughs> Agreed. We need to know what other people are identifying as their true so we can respond to their nonsense. 
but we need to know what God has to say more and spend more time with God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Good stuff in, good <laughs> stuff out, too much garbage in, garbage starts to come out. <laughs> wow. That's so profound. I bet Cindy. your grandmother said that, Cindy. I love that. <laughs> oh, she's parked now. Okay. Oh. <laughs> she just wants everybody to know. Safely. Um, I think that's a good point. That's my that's my theory. Too much garbage in, garbage starts to come out. Well, I mean, oh, for sure, the one thing that I know now, because I just started doing it, <laughs> uh, and that is the thing I've been I've been trying to do for some fifty five years. <laughs> that sounds like a long time when I when you say it out loud, right? And that is to read the Bible. And so, do you, tell, I, do you want to tell our friends what happened? Today, though? Just a second ago. Yes, we'll, we'll talk about that. So if, if, if you're not reading the Bible, but you're only reading other things, clearly that is not. Clearly <laughs> that is wrong, right? Yeah, and that's what I used to do. I read the Book of Mormon. I read... Uh, Self-help books, Tony yeah, Robbins. Dianetics, Tony Robbins, all that kind of stuff, but didn't read the real... But the Bible got dusty. The, the real help book, the right. God help book. Right. Um, but... Because you need you need to hear the truth, yes, so that you can discern, yes, the, so the, the lies and the the, the false uh, right doctrines. So as our friends know, Andy has started the one year Bible for the first year. Very excited, waking up every day very early. Um, he was a little behind because he was on a trip and he didn't have his his paper book with him. And then something interesting happened today when so Andy was woke four up. Four chapters. I was like four days behind. Four days behind. Yes. But today, he also woke up at 4.30. And what did you do, Andy, when you woke up at 4.30? Well, I woke up at 4.30. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, last night, I realized that I had a meeting scheduled for 8. Ah. Now, normally, my workout at the gym would be at 8. So from 5 o'clock to about 7.30, I read the, the one-year the one Bible. Yes. But because I had a meeting at 8, I needed to get... To figure out how it was i didn't want to end up being you know at the gym until two in the afternoon so i said i know i'll, I'll pull a switcheroo i woke up at 4 30 i went to the gym and well i got coffee then i went to the gym yes and then i went to my meeting at eight yes and then i read the one year bible i i, I don't see i don't see how that uh, do you really think that's a problem i promise you mm -hmm. before you know it the habit will break Really? Oh my God, the devil creeps up just like that. Just like that. Wow. I've seen it happen a thousand times. So what you're saying, I just should have... You absolutely, unless you don't have your book. I have my book. Or you're sick and you can't wake up. Yeah, that was do per not healthy. change the time. You don't. You cannot change the time. Because once the devil knows, oh, okay i see now i just gotta rearrange some things and i could totally distract him but the the devil could have got me when i went on that long where we went to detroit i went to detroit and then i met you up in nashville yeah. where i didn't have my book he could have but you fought it and you won so he tried a new tactic <laughs> i fought the law and the law, law one. um yeah yeah so he tried a new tactic he made this oh, cool. Look at you. He made this cool new class and said, "Andy, you're up early. I made this really cool class for you at six. <laughs> it's perfect." So I just have to wake up at three. Yeah. Exactly. Well, that's what you got to tell the devil. Say, "Oh ho, you want to yeah. give me a class at six? I'm gonna wake up at three. Yeah. So there. So there. I actually could have done that today too. Because I was up at three. <laughs> yeah. I rolled around on the bed until 4.30 and then got up. Um, I mean, rolled on the bed by myself. Just so they. <laughs> I wish all the other ladies were on so they could comment. We're going to have to have this discussion again tomorrow. Yeah. Well, we're missing all of our peeps. Um, so that they can comment. If you're hearing comment. this afterwards, please put your comments and tell me whether... You agree. Well, you got me just now with it's, it was a different tactic. He, he thought he was going to get me with the being on vacation, but I was firm. I said, no, I'm going to, I'm going to catch up. Right. Because it's a time I go to the East coast and it's a time change. And it, it, I mean, it's, I know that sounds like a lot of the devil talking right there, but it just wasn't 
it wasn't in the cards. No, and you didn't have the book. And I didn't have the book. So you didn't have a digital copy. Yeah. We need to get you the Kindle copy. Anyways. I do. I need to do that. I don't, it, yeah. You uh, don't have to read it all the time on the Kindle, but you need the emergency Kindle copy. See? See? Where were you when I needed you? I'm always here. <laughs> I'm always here. <laughs> so, yeah. Please, if you're watching on the replay, give us your comments on whether you agree that in order to break a biblical God-centered habit, the devil tries to distract us. And if he can distract us, he could take us off our, our, our game. Yeah. I'm really interested to know what you think about reading other, uh, and other religions. Topic of the de devotional, reading other religions. Yeah. And in general, it's just secular knowledge. I totally believe in the acquisition of knowledge. I love it. I think it's really important. Um, but my commentary was that I worry sometimes too much in this day and age, our access to information is so abundant that you end up, um, with too much information. So I was listening to Dan Bongino this morning. You were able to listen. I was, well, I, I don't, you know what, honestly, I don't know how much it was. Mine stopped was. at 11 minutes. Yeah. So I think maybe that's all I heard was mm -hmm. 11 minutes where he was talking about Moscow, the, the yep. shooting and like his five different perspectives. On who it was? Oh, I didn't get that far. It it, it froze at eleven on me. I See, I only was. saw about eleven minutes, hmm. but I don't know if it was a different eleven minutes than yours. Yeah. But in mine, he was giving us like five different theories on who committed the shooting, and I was thinking to myself, if I was listening to it, I was like, do I really need to know this? Like, am I filling my brain right now with too many what ifs about something that is so unimportant? I say yes. Yes. Because you um, are very involved and you I are follow. considered um, the the Islam person, the Christian who formerly spoke right. China. And, and Islamic terrorism. So that's why I was curious yeah. to hear what are people saying about Moscow. Um, but you had some really good information on that too when about Syria. No, you did last oh. night. Um, well, because... Yeah, so he didn't believe that it was ISIS because he said it was too convenient. Um, he says Blinken warned Russia because he did it publicly yeah. ahead of time. Two weeks so ago. we knew of the attack. The um, Estonia Secret Service knew of an attack against them. But that all could have been chatter on ISIS um, Networks. on the dark web. Yeah. So that and then Paris raised its threat level as a result of that yep. attack. But then he was saying it could have been um, Putin doing it to himself. Um, and I don't see that. Yeah, I don't see that either. I, mean, I don't. He's, he's pretty out there, but I don't think he would do that. And not like that, opening fire like that? Like, no. No. And I don't think that's the Ukrainians either. That kind of brutality takes um, a very crazy deprivation. So we'll see. I don't know. I mean, it, it could it be a faction of the Ukrainians that have just they've just had it. They've just they're, they've, but they're broken. That, how, what does that achieve for them? Just, it just inspires the Russians to do more. Yeah. If they find out it's Ukraine backed, it's just going to, you know, that was uh, Dan's point that it would allow Putin the excuse to go nuclear mm -hmm. if he could link it to the Ukrainians. Yeah. No, but I was thinking, I mean, all of us as counterterrorism experts are just waiting for the other shoe to drop for ISIS or some other major terrorist organizations to hit the United States. Yeah. But Russia. Yeah, that was odd. That was odd. So the only thing, as I told you last night, what I told Andy, what is, is what occurred to me was that it was their support of Bashar Assad. They support they basically are the reason he's still standing is Russia. Well, I think ISIS, at least the followers of isis in that that area still hold the grudge for their year their their battle in afghanistan back in the what is it, 80s who russia mm -hmm. was fighting the afghanis right and that's when we were helping osama bin laden right. with weapons so they they don't like russia either they don't like I, iran uh you know they don't like any okay of those. i mean their hatred for them i'm sure is still 
Because, because you know, they never mixing, forget. But we're mixing terrorist groups here. Mm. Al Qaeda mm. is different than ISIS. Okay. So, and the reason I'm, it seems like a distinction without a difference, but it's important. Mm. ISIS is mostly comprised of um, former Ba'athists, people that were um, military figures under uh, Saddam Hussein. So remember, when we ousted Saddam Hussein, the Sunnis lost control. So the Shiites took over. So Iraqi overnight became a Shiite state. Mm. So ISIS is a hodgepodge of former Ba'athist Sunnis, and then the ragtag, you know, jihadis from around the world. Mm. Um, Al Qaeda mission focus was on getting the infidel out of Arab lands. ISIS is trying to form a territory, Al Qaeda and ISIS. So ISIS believes in a manual, basically recreating the caliphate, the, the Islamic state. Al Qaeda doesn't. Al Qaeda theologically doesn't believe you could do that by human means. The savior has to come back to do that. Um. So their, their political motivations would be different. Gotcha. So ISIS's number one enemy to creating their Islamic state and maintaining it is the president of Syria, mm. who is unilaterally supported in the world by Russia. Got it. Better connection. That was a lot. James, mm. question. Are you all taking questions? We absolutely he's, are taking questions. He's on X. Yes. A, Looks a, like a Sasquatch. Or I thought it was a man in a bike suit. The dog came to bite you, but it, you might be right. It looks like the rear side of a Sasquatch. <laughs> what is your graphic, James? Yeah, what are your questions, James? And your question. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll... And Kelly thinks it's way too much information overload. I need to take a break sometimes. Yeah, yeah I don't know if that's also a woman thing, Kelly, because we seem to get a lot more frustrated quickly than men do. But she always just says a break sometimes. I think everybody needs a break from... Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. But we go, we go right back to it. <laughs> well, yeah. to tell you the truth, I'm having a hard time deciding who I believe. Really? I'm getting like Pastor Jack, where I'm like, I don't even know whose news source I should believe anymore. Um, I love that list he gave yesterday of all of the news sources. Oh, did he give a list yesterday? Mm -hmm. I saw a whole bunch of lists of all kinds of things yesterday, <laughs> but I didn't see a news source. Yes. I don't think he did that in second service. Uh, yeah. I don't did you take a screenshot? It's on his website. He said he gave these are all the, mm -hmm. okay i believe so because um yeah I, I mean just even watching the conservatives implode they if he could they he would deceive even the elect um the end times just the the chaos of uncertainty right now mm -hmm. uh I mean, all this stuff with Candace Owens totally freaking me out too. And I don't understand what's happening. The, um, the fractioning of the conservative movement is a little bit bizarre. And, and it goes to Pastor Jack's point at the epicenter Israel, because even the United States will turn its back on Israel. So watching. Okay. I'm going to try to, exp I'm going to, I'm going to go on a rabbit trail here, but I think it's important because a lot of our viewers are Pastor Jack um, students. Um, and so I think they'll get this. Um, we are staunch supporters of Israel, hands down. We support Israel, hands down. Uh, God says, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you because. We being Christians or we being the United States of America? Followers of Pastor Jack. Okay. Students. Okay. Students of Pastor Jack. Disciples that okay. go to Calvary Chapel Chino Hills. Our teacher has instilled that value by teaching us the Old Testament through the New. So it's not we blindly follow anybody. He has, based on the way he has explained and articulated the concepts in the Bible, which we can read for ourselves, God has never disowned his promises to Israel, nor shall he ever. And if he were to, then the promises to us are invalid too. So. He will always support, God will always support and defend Israel. Mm -hmm. um, but you can see suddenly the, what they're describing as a Christian nationalist movement, which is not what Pastor Jack is at all, but what he's being accused of. Mm -hmm. This nationalist movement is somewhat of isolationist. I've heard it even in Steve Bannon. 
Like, why do we have to support Israel? Who cares? It's Catholic. Catholics don't care about Israel. Hmm. Um, so we have to realize that we have to listen to all of these factions now that are happening in the conservative movement and be like, whoa, wait a minute, that is against the Bible. We, we follow Bible first, not party first. We are citizens of heaven. And so when they start to deviate, some, some in the MAGA movement are isolationists. And if you're an isolationist, that means you move away from global politics to focus on hypernationalism. The danger of hypernationalism is you abandon Israel. And as Pastor Jack was explaining yesterday, we're seeing this happen in real time because even people in the United States are turning their back on Israel. The last bastion of hope for American support for Israel is the conservative movements. If the conservatives stop supporting Israel, it's done. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that was a long-winded. No, that's right. But you even got Jews, you know, that that are for a two-state solution to absolutely uh, because they're looking at a secular lens. Mm -hmm. They're thinking. I mean, this is this is something I dealt with in twenty plus years of government service. The entire State Department are atheists, so they want um, diplomatic solutions to problems. I was like, you can't have a diplomatic solution to problems if people are not playing by the same rules you are. They have a theology that guides them, not an ideology, not a political ideology. They have a theology that guides them. So your diplomatic solutions, the, the, um, the Muslim ideology is they will inherit the entire earth until the Savior comes and rules with Jesus. So they believe in a, in a rule of a Jesus. So they won't, they won't stop at anything less short of that. Um, and so we also will stop, we must not stop short of anything but um, supporting Israel until the king returns. And you have firsthand knowledge of this because of what you had to deal with, with Osama bin, no, Osama bin Laden. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Obama. <laughs> when he told you in a, in a meeting. Well, and that was just him personally, but I had to deal with it for decades working with State Department officials in every country at all levels. Mm. It wasn't just Obama. He was a, you know, he's just one executive. But the entire machinery, what, what we all now call the deep state, the entire um, machinery of our diplomacy is built on atheism. Mm. Something that, you know, people like Pompeo tried to change, but it's not changeable. Wow. Kelly, I have to say there's a comment on Candace. Candace Owen says, those who support Israel don't know their real history. I don't completely understand what people mean by the real history. They want to rewrite history. Yeah. It's a little confusing. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't tell you. There is nothing more crazy than what's going on with Candace Owen right now. And I told Andy, he's like, what are you listening to? Because I started to listen. I'm going back and li listening to each of her podcasts from this past week because I can't listen to commentary about what she said anymore. I need to hear it from her because it just does not make any sense what they're saying she said. Um, and so uh, what, what Christians I trust are saying about what she's saying is that she doesn't know the Bible. She doesn't understand the Bible. So the things she's saying about Israel is because she doesn't understand the Bible. So if she's talking about history, she's talking about a political history that she thinks she understands, but she doesn't understand God's history. She needs to, needs to listen to the last two, two or three sermons from Pastor Jack. She does. <laughs> that would be I literally was going to test, pa pa text Pastor Jack last night and be like, can you get a meeting with her? Yeah. Because she's just, turned around. Just get a hold of uh, Charlie Kirk. Yeah, so because they're, mean, you know, they're really good friends. I'm like, can you please ask for me? He was like, you really need it. Because remember last time I asked him about her, he was not aware of the conflict. Like, he's not engaged. He's not interested. Right. But I, I'm thinking by this point, somebody must have been like, can you please look at this? Because I don't understand how she gets straightened out unless somebody of substance explains it to her. All right, let's read the scripture real quick. Proverbs. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, 
I love that. Give prudence to the simple. To the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. To understand a proverb and an enigma, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. I would like to cut and paste and have Jack send that to Candace. <laughs> <laughs> because seriously, that's that's the humbleness and the open heartedness and the discernment of a believer. Right there, you know, yeah. being open to hearing, maybe I don't get this. I think a long form. Um discussion between the two of them yes would be great to hear on a podcast well she should bring him on the show yeah kind of like what your interview your very first interview you know the very first podcast that he did with you yeah that, that back and forth discussion. and candace does those tucker had candace on and candace has her own podcast mm -hmm. where she brings people and does long form discussion on and it's important why why do you think it's important that we do that with Candace. And so as a oh my to... gosh, she's a huge voice for young conservatives mm -hmm. and she's got half a million followers. I mean, and, and she's a believer and she professes a believer. I mean, she's, she's posting scripture. Her response to Ben Shapiro about failing to support Israel was Bible verses. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So she's yielding the sword of the spirit. Um, and chopping people's heads off with it. You know what I mean? Like, you're like, whoa, wait. You know what I mean? Like, it's like somebody so with easy. a loaded gun pointing in the wrong direction. You're like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> okay, time out. You know Is what it, I mean? My, my kids do the same thing to me on occasion. Right? <laughs> we'll take a verse and I'll go, mm, that's not really. Out of context. Yeah, yeah out of context. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's so, so easy to do. So dangerous. Yeah. People, Extremists do that. Yeah, they like to do that. I have people on my post that, that, that Mark guy, he will put on something and I'll go, absolutely the left does it all the time mm -hmm. you're right it's like somebody grabbing a gun that doesn't know how to use it yes yeah, it's, it's waving it around <laughs> <laughs> oh my god stop that is this the safety <laughs> you know and especially around young people because um let's face it see we got to realize there is a demonic um uh, there's a demonic spirit that wants to turn everyone's heart against israel as Pastor Jack was explaining this weekend, the de uh, these, Satan thinks if he could destroy Israel, Jesus has no place to come back to. Mm. Because the book says he comes back to Jerusalem, rules <coughs> and reigns. So he's thinking if I destroy it, he has no place to come back to. The prophecy is foiled, which is the same reason why we don't believe that's possible. Mm. So there is a spirit, a very strong spirit of delusion to pull people away from Jews and, and Israel. Um, and so if she is being utilized in that way, um, then you, you want to try to correct it. Yeah. And you believe and hope and pray she's correctable. James, really quick, we are taking questions. You, you yes, know. we are taking questions. We told you. Yeah. Please. <laughs> He may have missed Fire it. away. I thought I would answer. Maybe he didn't hear your, you tell him that. Tell he says. She has pa she had Pastor Jack on her Prager U show a few years ago. So they have That's met. That's another connection. Prager U. Yeah. Prager U for sure. Okay. I am going to um, reach out to a couple of those channels <laughs> and see if I could. Get set up again. Yeah. She, maybe she needs a refresher. She needs a refresher. James says. Uh, God walked away from the Jewish people. Um, the Jewish people walked away from God. Yes. <laughs> God never walks away from his people. I mean, think about it. You can't worship a God that breaks his promises. So our Bible, if you're a believer in Christianity, maybe you're not, um, is the Old Testament and the New Testament. You can't understand the New Testament without reading the Old Testament. God doesn't create a whole new set of, I know there's people that believe that, uh, create a whole new set of promises. No, his promises are continual and eternal. That's how you can depend on them. Because if he broke his covenant to the Jews and to Israel, then he's gonna break his covenant to me. Then how can I have surety of my salvation with a God who changes his mind? So my God doesn't change his mind. The God of the Bible doesn't change his mind. We have a few minutes left. Let's. Um, he asked me how I was saved. Yeah, I think that would be the best one to, to end on. 
because now they're, yeah. And so James S. Um, how were you saved? I was saved by meeting Jesus Christ on the internet. So I didn't stay there, but that's how I was saved. Uh, I watched a YouTube video of a pastor and that got me ultimately connected um, with the Bible, with the Lord until I went and got baptized and attended a Bible um, preaching and teaching church under Pastor Jack, Pastor Jack Hibbs, who we've been talking about. Awesome. Last book of the Bible is the book of Revelation. And it says that only the chosen one will know when the world will die. Um, uh, my understanding is the world doesn't die. It's reborn. But that's it a lot of It does get a gigantic new earth, a flame yes. to it. <laughs> <laughs> it gets a facelift. It gets put in the kindling oven. Yes. And gets uh, redone. Um, Somebody trained him for 15 years. Yeah. Who? Who trained you for 15 years? But thank you for your questions. Yes. Come back again. Yes. Unfortunately, we're hitting the, the towards the end of our uh, the show. But um, why are we oh. going off? So it's still 36 minutes. Well, we have the prayer requests. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right? You, but you're so quick. You usually go on forever. Are you running somewhere? Well, I got a little hungry. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, we can stay. You see, we can this stay. is so exciting. And you suddenly, you usually 50 minutes. You're like, um, I got to tell another story now. Okay, well, okay, now you've done it. So okay. I'm going to tell him how I was saved. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I told it a hundred times. Um, I'll save the uh, the current audience. But uh, Jesus showed up at a at a meeting I was at. And uh, he's standing right there in front of me. Yeah, and, amen. Uh, changed my life. It was spectacular. Amen. Uh, he'll do that sometimes. I can't guarantee he'll do it to you, but um, he definitely. Uh, he will always show up. Yeah, though. he always shows up but not standing like right in front of me. Yeah, that may be different. I thought he was going to punch me. Yeah, I thought for a second he might punch me. <laughs> because he's like saying, you know, okay, that. listen. <laughs> what, took, he wanted to, what took you so long to repent? He goes, I saw you a few weeks ago repent. And, and I, I, I I was like, oh, I've been waiting for that. Like, and so he wanted to like slap me and say, you should have done that 40 years ago. Right. Or whenever it was. I've been waiting for you to do that. Um. Shoot, I had uh, another question. For James you. says, he said, you know how I was saved? God asked me if I wanted to be saved, and I said yes. No, awesome. I love that. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Um, gosh, I wish I could remember what I was just going to ask you, but it has to do with, um, oh, you grew up in Beverly Hills. It was about the Jews. Yes. I uh, grew up in Beverly Hills was with a, with a very large community Entirely of Jews. Jewish. In, entirely I did Jewish. not meet a Christian person until college. Out of those Jews, it always sounds funny to say. It's like Mexicans. They all, <laughs> I'm Hispanic, by the way. Um, um, were they devout, the, the Jews that you mostly knew in, in, in Beverly Hills? Oh, okay. Mixed. Some were Orthodox, and um, a lot of them were secular, just culturally Jewish. But yet, when they're culturally Jewish, they do they still eat? Don't no. eat don't eat pork. They won't eat pork, but they just don't eat kosher. Hmm. Remember, you're in the book of Numbers. You just yep. finished Leviticus and Exodus. The, all those rules still apply to the Jews. Wow. So um, the question is, how adherent are they? Like my best friend, um, as I was a young adult, when I first came to D.C., was an Orthodox Jew. I learned a lot from her because um, we were both fighting terrorism. So she was working for Steve Emerson at the time. Mm. And um, I was doing work for the government. And so we were best friends. And I learned a lot about um, habits and stuff like that. But growing up, there were all kinds. But when the high holidays came, they were a temple. All the kids were bar or bat mitzvah, which was their 13th kind of like communion. Uh, what do you guys call it in Catholic church? Catechism? Catechism. Yeah. Yep. Um, but they, uh, they didn't keep to all of the Levitical laws necessarily. Like they didn't put the woman out in the, in the tub for eight days after her period and stuff like that. Right. So down the street, we have that Beth. Oh man, I had it on the tip of my tongue. It's right on your Belinda Boulevard. Right. Um, Beth and me or yeah. Beth where we see people walking that have the hat in the, yes. in the locks. <laughs> yeah. Levitical like law. Like. Don't shave the sides of your head. Uh, but we don't know any of these people. Are, are there any, do you know of any 
Jewish people in our circle of friends that we, that we, you know, because, because Pastor right. Jack always tells us to, to at least make friends with atheists and make friends with some Jews <laughs> and have discussions with them about Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Not that I know. I, I can't think All of, of the ones I know are messianic. They believe in Christ. Oh. Yeah, I wanted to talk to him a little bit about. I about have this. some in, in LA that we met at the party. They're all Jewish. Oh, yeah. Yeah, our friends out that host the parties out there. Have you, did you send him a text message inviting him to our home church? I have not. <laughs> but she, uh, one of them is on fire over this whole thing with Candace. Mm. Um, so I was going to engage in a conversation with her about it because she's, and the reason this is alerted to me is I have a good friend that I've met now through um, social networking for conservatives. She's posting a bunch of um, videos about Candace and one of her latest posts uh, was something along the lines of, um, we now have seen uh, the anti-Semites hiding under the MAGA flag. And I was like, oh, for the love of God, like that is the worst. That is the worst is to see that she said that or that is that that happening both mm. that, she, that that's the way she sees it because there's no reason I see why she sees that um, because that is what I would see too based on their reaction and the words that they're using. Uh, but I'm trying to find what exactly, but that is so um, detrimental to who we are as um as Christians, is for the Jewish community to just start to think we're anti-Semites. Wow. The conservatives are anti-Semites. Hmm. I don't I don't see that, but I think I have to open my eyes to it a little bit more. Oh, you definitely do, because wow. she went and interviewed Nick Fuentes. You know, the more they started calling her an anti-Semite, then she went to interview Nick Fuentes and one other cuckoo bird. Uh, oh, uh, Norman Finkelstein. I mean... Everybody knows Norman Finkelstein is a rabid Jew hater, even though he's Jewish. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just been. What, just what been I want to do is print out the um, uh, the graphs that uh, Pastor Jack, the 50 different references to uh, the Old Testament, where it talks about yes. everything that has to do with the, the uh, uh, Jesus coming to the earth and, and resurrection and. All the all the connections to that the prophecy, I thought that was awesome. Fifty different, amazing uh, areas of the Old Testament. What an amazing graphic! Point to and Cindy, our Cindy Jesus, Cindy not Cindy. a not not another prophet or not another Messiah, to Jesus Christ. Yes. How do you, how do they ignore that? That's that they, eventually that was my point. <laughs> like, how do you ignore all the things that are in the Old Testament that point directly to Jesus? You think that you're still waiting for a different one? <laughs> Wow. Cindy right. said she has Jewish friends. Yeah. Because she's a messianic Jew. Oh. She probably has family. Yeah. You probably still have family that is Jewish, Cindy, right? James says Muslims. Uh, I, I don't know. know. <laughs> I don't know if it's related to this. He said, I, have you ever seen God work and God do something that would hold up in a court of law? That's an interesting perspective. Ooh. James, we have to think about that. Yeah. And, uh, and then I don't know if that's related to the statement before mm -hmm. it says Muslims because yeah, I'm in a court of law all the time so I would I would definitely I would like to figure that out right because they uh, now currently in the United States what they uh, there used to be a Bible that you would put your hand on the only time I've seen a Bible now is when I was testifying I want to say South Carolina oh really so now what do they put your hand on nothing you just raise your hand oh uh -huh. and so say, you put your left hand on the Bible and raise your hand and now they do you and now they, swearing to God anymore, right? And only in some states. There, and then again, North Carolina, I think it was one of those, maybe South Dakota. Now, don't quote me, I could be wrong. That at the end, there's no Bible, but at the end they'll say, So help you God. Am I not allowed to say, Oh my Lord? Not if it doesn't have to do with praising God. It, even if I'm wanting to call, because I said just a minute ago, a friend of mine called out that I shouldn't say, Oh my God. So I'm not, like, <laughs> So I can't say, oh, my Lord, this is terrible when I'm talking to Jesus. Because I'm literally talking to Jesus. Well, you're talking to Jesus. Because I'm saying, oh, my Lord, this is terrible. Yes. I think that that's okay. But you can't just say, oh, my God. Like that to something like, that somebody does. Like just out of exacerbation. Right. Okay. So, God, that was just a an example. 
Well, because, yeah, because I, I, these I, are Christianese I, folks, because I grew up not Christian. So I mm-hmm. didn't realize, you know, I know the don't take God's name in, in vain. Like you're not supposed to stub your toe and scream Jesus. Um, even though when I really hurt myself, I call out to Jesus, but not in a, not in a, his taking his name. Yeah, to vain. Yeah, I think as long as you are directly talking to him, you can call him by all of his names. Okay. Lord Jesus. Oh, I want to show people my new hat. Oh, okay. Can I do that before we yes. leave? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Cindy says, I didn't have the any of the connections of prophecy brought to me when I was Jewish in my belief. Isn't that amazing? Well, I mean, Cindy, I wasn't witness to ever, and I was around interfaith leaders, priests, every single, nearly every single day, <laughs> and no one witnessed to me. Not a one. Uh, and she says she's only one of two people in the family that are messianic. Yeah. You know, there's, there's things that pop up on Facebook, and every so often I click the buy button. And sometimes you get them, and they're they're not worth the. Yeah, I had that weird teeth cleaner thing. Yeah, <laughs> it looks so cool, but it just hurt. <laughs> Was it good? I forgot about that. And I'm like, here, try it. And he's like, no, <laughs> you just finished saying how horrible it was. I'm not trying it. Yeah, and I was like, I don't understand why you just won't. Why you won't try the... with me? <laughs> So you do, you're like one of those people that says, oh, this I am. smells terrible. Here, smell it. I, I go, am. You just I'm told right. me that it's terrible. Those... Exactly. This really hurts. It causes bleeding and it may injure you for the rest of your life. But here, try it. Yes. Be careful. <laughs> well, I give you a disclaimer. Be careful. <laughs> but on Facebook, I bought this hat and I, it is amazing. I love it. It's, uh, it says Yahweh on the front. Adonai Elohim. <laughs> yes. I think I love this on the side. Oop, on the other side, it's a. Uh, I thought you brought that for the kids because no, it I looks like something me. you would uh, give to Bo. It is a world champion, like a baseball, like the like the World Series, but it's the uh, the Trinity. It's awesome, yeah. <laughs> uh, Cindy. You shouldn't use God's name in a curse. Absolutely. So that's obvious to me. But I was told I shouldn't say, um, and I respect and love this person very much, and so I agreed to not say it. Um, oh my God. That I say that um, out of exacerbation, like, oh my God, this is, and quite frankly, I am, I feel in my heart, I'm in conversation with God all the time. And so when I say, oh my God, it, it's like, I, it, what I said to this person is like, I thought I'm calling attention to God about something that's exacerbating me. Um, and they said, no, that's taking God's name in vain. I was like, okay, I won't do it anymore. Mm-hmm. So that's the context. So it's not a curse. Um, it's a calling attention to something. Um, and I was told that was not appropriate either. I think it's from my Catholic faith. So I, I, and Andy oh, said it wasn't either. I said, so. oh my gosh. So he says, oh my gosh, I'm not using the word gosh. So I'm just going to have to change my expression. In text, I say goodness. Know, in I text, say, oh I, goodness. I, I type OMG and it, it, yes. it types out, oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just always... It bothers me when someone says, oh, my God, all the time in their current speech patterns because it isn't respecting God. It's just usage of his name. Yeah. Randomly, like throwing Randomly. it out there. Yeah. But yeah. do you ever say, oh, my God, Cindy? Because you know the reverence you have for the Lord. So do you ever say, oh, my God, like if something exacerbates you, like somebody tells you your friend, God forbid, has cancer. Would you in response say, oh, my God, I can't believe that. Would you say that? Is that disrespectful? So say I type OMG and then I hit send and it turns into oh my gosh. Oh, how cute. But does that happen to everybody or? No, you have to program it in. Oh. <laughs> Anybody else have any opinions? Please drop them in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> you want to tell me I'm a heathen? Heathen. Yep. Heathen. Oh, I think I'm gosh. ready. I'm ready to land the plane Where'd now. Where'd James go? No, we want to talk to James more. I don't know if Cindy's still here. <laughs> I mean, uh, James is still here. Um, uh, no, I think that's it. Any, I think that's any, it. Because I, I gotta, any, I gotta leave at one thirty. I didn't see any prayer requests. Okay, so we're just closing prayer. Yes. Okay. Uh, I gotta. I'm gonna pray for Candace. Oh yes. Yeah. Uh, dear Lord, uh, thank you for this time of fellowship. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the fact that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are holy, God. Um, You are holy, and therefore we shall be holy. You do not break any of your covenants, any of your 
promises um, to your sons and daughters. You will uphold all your promises to your people, Lord. And we're so grateful that we are now grafted into that community of believers. Whether we originate as the Jewish people or not, we are all one family, your church. And we're so grateful to be your bride, Lord. Thank you. We praise your name. We love you and we honor you with all that we have and all that we do. Lord, we lift up Candace Owens to you and we ask that you give her discernment and wisdom. Um, she loves you. She professes your name. And we ask that you give her a right understanding that you will send wise counsel to her that will advise her and, and um, help her to understand the relationship uh, between Israel and God's heart and what God's heart is for the Jewish people and for Israel, Lord. Um, we ask that you do that for all people who believe in the wrong doctrine of replacement theology, for anyone who has lost their way um, and that causes division, um, Lord, that your church remain whole and a right understanding of your Bible. Um, Lord, we ask that you bless all of our friends, all the people we know and we don't know that we've never spoken to, Lord, that you give them good health, you give them um, a good spirit and strong discernment for the times that are ahead where there's so much deception and desire to distract the believer. Lord, fortify us and renew us with your strength. We love you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we ask all things. Amen. Amen. All right, my friends, we love you guys. Love ya. God bless you. And uh, uh, we're so happy that James joined us. He appears to be a new, yeah. a new viewer. Thank all you, right, James. We love you. God Bye. bless. Bye.